Today I'm sharing with you all my fall 2023 knitting plans. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today we have my fall knitting plans video. This was a highly anticipated video both by you and by me. I have been looking forward to moving into fall knitting very eagerly and I'm so excited to share with you guys my plans. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what's inspiring me this fall to knit, including color palette and type of projects that I'm interested in making. I'm then going to share with you guys a whole pattern lineup, a full list of 12 knitting patterns that are really inspiring me this fall, and then I'll be sharing with you guys a more selective list from that pattern roundup as to what I plan on knitting, and I'll be showing you guys all the yarn that I have planned for those projects. So let's get started. <laughs> fall is such an exciting season for me. I've always loved it. It definitely is my favorite time of the year with the exception of Christmas time in December. I just love how all of the leaves change. I love the cooler, crisper air that's outside. I feel more comfortable going outside when it's a little bit cooler rather than when it's a little bit hotter. I love fall outfits. I mean, sweaters, cardigans, yes jeans, boots, all of that. So fun. I love the fall decorations, Halloween decorations, Thanksgiving decorations here in the U.S. It's just a really good time and living in New England, I think I'm a little bit spoiled by the fall here. We have just beautiful scenery everywhere. I don't have to go too far to enjoy the beauty of the season. So I'm really excited to take that love for fall into my knitting life because I also love fall projects. So if you guys follow along with my knitting videos, knitting journey, you guys know I've been pumping out the summer knits. I think I surprised myself with how much summer knitting I got done. I really delved into a lot of different summer fibers like cotton, linen, wool blends, and all those things. Lots of tank tops and t-shirts, but I'm looking forward to finishing those up and moving back into my favorite fibers to work with including wools and mohairs and surreys. So I will define fall as in my knitting life. I'm defining fall as September through December. Now I usually go by the calendar definitions of the seasons. So technically fall doesn't start until three quarters of the way through September and then goes through December, but I don't know. I just did not want to be knitting summer knits through September, even though I did say in my summer knitting video that September counted. I, <laughs> I'm changing my mind. I'm taking that back and shifting gears because it just didn't make sense for me to continue knitting tank tops and t-shirts in September by the time they would have been finished. You know, I might have been able to wear them a few times, but I would have probably appreciated my time spent on more warm items that I could wear once September and the cooler air rolls in. In terms of knitting for the weather here where I live, I did say before I live in New England, which by the way, if you didn't know that Knee Knits, the N-E, actually stands for New England, I know a lot of people are surprised when I mention that, so I'll just quickly throw that in here. Um, but yeah, living here in New England, we have a pretty quintessential fall in terms of temperature, you know, the temperature does drop. I feel like it tends to stay hot through September, but come October it does drop and then November it tends to drop more significantly. Like I feel like all of a sudden in October we're bundling up in heavy coats and wondering where the sun went and that definitely continues through November and December as we get closer to winter. Pretty transitional time period. We'll definitely still experience those days where the mornings are really cool, but then by the afternoon when the sun is out, it can be really hot. So definitely a transitional time where I think layering is very important. Layers that you can take off during the day or put back on depending on what you're doing and what you need to wear at that time. An obvious choice for a layering piece is a cardigan. And I feel like every time I sit down and talk about what patterns I want to knit, I always say that cardigan cardigans are the top of my list because they're so versatile, they're really easy to style and to wear, and I always feel like I need more. I need more in different cuts, different colors, different fabrics, and time goes by and I still don't knit as many cardigans as I would like to. So the cardigan desire is returning again for the fall, no surprise there. That's definitely on my list of things to knit. 
Obviously, pullovers are a staple piece in a knitwear wardrobe, so I'm definitely looking forward to knitting some pullovers this fall, but then I'm also going back to the transitional or maybe not necessarily super warm items, thinking of slipovers or sweater vests as a good fall knitting item. I think those, although I don't really see myself using it as a layering piece like to take on and off throughout the day it's definitely something where you can get some knitwear into your outfit without needing a full sweater like maybe if it's too hot for that i think a slipover is a great choice so those are the types of projects that i'm looking at for this fall So now let's talk about colors that are inspiring me this fall and they actually might surprise you. I feel like when we think of fall and we think of autumn, we think of oranges and yellows and browns and all of those autumnal leaf colors that we see in the foliage and I love those colors. I love how that just encapsulates all of fall but for my knitting and for my wardrobe, you will not be seeing that color palette from me. I. I'm not really a warm toned girl. I like cooler tones. I like more saturated jewel tones, you know, the blues, the purples, the greens. Trying to get more into pinks, but haven't really dipped my toes. <laughs> haven't really stepped into the water completely there yet. But in terms of oranges, browns, yellows, well, you won't really see many oranges from me. As for reds, if the red is cooler leaning, I think I would definitely get into reds. If the browns are also cooler leaning, I would probably get into those, but in general, warmer tones just don't really look that good on me and they also just aren't my personal preference of colors. So I am still pulling from my winter palette, which is a seasonal color palette that reflects my skin tone and hair color and the combination of undertone and contrast. I've mentioned this before, so I'll just quickly mention it again in case you're a new viewer. I did a quick online color analysis tool that sort of analyzed a few different photos of me and, and told me that I am a winter and thus would look best in these colors that I will put on the screen here. And you can see that they're all very saturated, cool toned, jewel tones, lots of purples, blues, pinks, and all of the neutrals are more on the gray side because they need to pull that cooler gray you're not going to see a lot of beiges in the winter palette so that's where i am continuing to pull most of my colors from because those look the best on me and they also are my favorite colors you know i think it's a nice coincidence that those two things overlap obviously don't force yourself to wear a color that you don't like just because it's supposed to look good on you you know you need to still enjoy what you're wearing so i know that the online color tool is never going to be anywhere as close as good as a professional analyzing you in person so yeah I would never say that the online tool is a replacement for that if you have the ability to go in person definitely would recommend it so I'm hoping to be able to do that one day as well so my color palette will mostly be cool toned again and a lot of neutrals. I pull out all the yarn for what I'm going to be knitting with, which I'll show later in the video, and I was surprised at how they all laid out. There are a lot of creams, there is a lot of black or very dark gray, and then a couple pops of color. So that's my color inspiration for the fall. Now I'm gonna share with you guys all of the patterns that are inspiring me this fall. If I had infinite time, infinite yarn, infinite hands, I would knit all the patterns on this list this season, but unfortunately I can't, but I can still share the list with you. I have 12 patterns to share and they all sort of fall into those categories that I mentioned earlier of projects that I would want to knit, including cardigans, slipovers, and pullovers. So let's get into the list. First up, we'll start with cardigans. Now, all of these cardigans that I'm about to mention, I really like because I feel like they can stand alone as your outfit piece if you have them buttoned up. I think they look really great on their own as a top, but they also look really great unbuttoned as a true layering piece if you needed to wear a shirt underneath or just didn't want it to be the focal point of your outfit. I think all of these cardigans have that great dual purpose. 
So the first cardigan on the list is the gown cardigan by Suman On. This I just love. It is so classy looking and I think it's because it's knit with fingering weight yarn so the really small stitches make it look really polished and crisp in combination with that 3x1 rib I think just looks really beautiful. It's intended to have a positive ease of 12 inches so pretty oversized and the finished bust circumference ranges from 43 inches to 73 and a half inches. This is a seamed pattern so keep that in mind if you're interested in making it. I think that's important to know going in and the the recommended yarn is Retro Saria Mondim, and of course you could use any fingering weight wool I think would look great in this cardigan. The next cardigan I'm going to mention is the Marigia Cardigan by Alexandra Solovaniak. And I think I mentioned this cardigan pattern in my spring knitting plans video, so I think it's just a sign that because it's still inspiring me that I should just knit it because it's just a beautiful piece. Now this is a top down DK weight raglan cardigan that has faux cabling all over it, so those little crosses I don't think you need a cable needle for, which looks very convenient for the knitting process. It's intended to have 8 to 12 centimeters of positive ease and comes in sizes extra small to 5XL. I think it just looks really polished, again would look really great buttoned up as your top, but also looks really great as a layering piece unbuttoned. The next cardigan inspiring me is the newest cardigan pattern release by Petite Knit, and that is the Eva cardigan. You knew when Petite Knit was going to release a new cardigan at the beginning of the fall that it just had to captivate someone like me who loves all of her patterns. So this is a DK weight cardigan. It uses the same construction that she's been putting out with the poppy tee, the Lyon sweater, and maybe a few other things. It's that contiguous set in sleeve construction that I think looks really nice. It doesn't look as casual as a drop shoulder would look, but it looks more polished than a raglan because you don't have those raglan seams coming from the neckline. The recommended ease is 10 and a quarter inches or 26 centimeters and comes in sizes double extra small to 5XL. I really love the 2x2 ribbing accents on it. I think 2x2 rib is going to have a moment this fall. I feel like 1x1 rib has been used a lot and I love it, but 2x2 rib just, it just has a different look. It almost looks kind of academic, so I like that in the Eva cardigan and you can use any DK weight wool for this. She uses Pear Gint from Sanus Garn, which is a very dense uh, high twist wool, but anything would look good, both variegated and solid, because it's such a basic staple cardigan. Now we'll move on from cardigans, but still staying in the layering concept for the fall. So I have three patterns here that are not exactly sweaters, but they are more layering pieces and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So first up we have the No Sweatshirt by Park Williams, also known as Park and Knit. And this is a knit hoodie and I really like the concept of a knit hoodie. You know, hoodies are just so easy to throw on when it gets cooler at night or if it's cool in the morning. They're oversized, they're usually soft. I wear hoodies all the time, so the idea of having a knit hoodie in my wardrobe sounds great. <laughs> This is a DK weight top down raglan style. It is knit in reverse stockinette, so you actually knit it inside out. And the final piece has all of the pearl side facing outward, which I think is really cool. She uses Noro Kakigori, which is a variegated yarn, and the variegated yarn in combination with the reverse stockinette I think looks really cool. So if I were to knit that, I would use a similar variegated yarn to really take advantage of that reverse stockinette detail. There are two hood options on this sweatshirt pattern. If you want a more pointed hood or a more rounded hood, she provides instructions for those both. It's recommended three to five inches of positive ease for this sweatshirt. It has a cropped fit and comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. Another sweatshirt pattern that's really been inspiring me this fall is The Traveler by Andrea Maori. This is a sport weight knit. It's knit from the bottom up and has this all over garter ridge texture that I really like. I think it's a really fun use of garter stitch in a knit and I think it just looks really good with the silhouette of the sweatshirt, like the cropped boxy fit, the drop shoulder, it just giving 
casual, fun afternoon vibes, which I really like. It has a recommendation of six to 10 inches of positive ease and comes in a finished bust circumference of 38 to 70 inches. She does also have two versions in one pattern. So if you don't want the hoodie, but like the style of like that garter ridge, the cropped, the boxy drop shoulder, you can make this into a crew neck. And the recommended yarn that she used in the sample is Farmer's Daughter Fibers Recollect Sport or Ritual Dyes Sprite. And the last layering piece pattern that I have here is neither a cardigan nor a sweatshirt, but it is the Zipper Sweater by Petite Knit. This is a quarter zip raglan top-down air and weight sweater. So you have a very thick collar, you have a sewn-in zipper, and it's just a very oversized sweater pattern. It has a recommended ease of 3.75 inches and it comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. The sample and recommended yarn is a worsted weight wool held with a mohair to make this an air and weight knit. So it is pretty thick. Knit on five millimeter needles is the recommended needle size. And this pattern has been around for a while. It's pretty well known for good reasons. It's just a really nice knit piece to have. If you're looking for more of a challenge with the zipper to sew in and just looking for that unique polished knit item that's not a plain pullover, I think the zipper sweater is a great choice for the fall. Next we'll move into slipovers, which I always knew as sweater vests until I became a knitter and then noticed that most designers call them slipovers, which I thought was interesting. And as I was looking through my slipover patterns that I have favorited on Ravelry, I realized that they were all by Petite Knit. And then I went to look for other ones, maybe by other designers, and I just didn't really find many that struck me. I feel like my slipover preference is oversized and I don't know if there are a lot of pattern designers that have very oversized patterns for slipovers. Um, so these next three patterns are all by Petite Knit. The first slipover that I really like is the Weekend Slipover V-neck. This is actually the first oversized slipover that caught my eye. It has very, like it comes off the shoulders a lot. It has a very deep V and I just really like the way that Petite Knit has it styled in all of her pattern photos. This is a bulky weight top-down v-neck slipover. It has one by one rib details. It looks like a folded v-neckline and the recommended ease is six to seven inches. That's about 15 to 20 centimeters and comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. This is an Aran weight wool held with mohair on five and a half millimeter needles. So I think that might be considered a bulky weight knit. So very thick, but definitely a good layering piece to have in the cooler days of fall. The next slipover is the Ingrid slipover. And this is a modification of her Ingrid sweater, or it's like a sister pattern to the Ingrid sweater with that all over texture. You have all these different panels of some cabling, some moss stitch, some ribbing, um, with some eyelets in between, which I think looks really nice. This is just such a iconic petite knit design, and I think the slipover doesn't get as much love as the sweater pattern, and I feel like I would like to knit the slipover. It's also oversized. It has that sort of, you know, draping over the shoulder style. It is a worsted weight knit. It's knit top down, and it has that sort of double ribbed neckline, which I don't really like. I think it's kind of it, it's different. I'm not, <laughs> like if you like it, that's awesome. It's just like a my preference thing. I don't really like it. So if I were to knit this, I would probably just do a regular two by two or one by one ribbed neckline. It is recommended to have eight inches of positive ease. Also comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. Petite Knit holds a DK weight wool with a mohair to make the worsted weight gauge on this. But of course you can knit it with just one strand of worsted weight wool. And the last slipover knitting pattern is the Seal Slipover by Petite Knit. This one definitely is, was kind of under the radar because she released it last year, but lately she's been re-promoting it because it kind of has similarities to her latest Storm sweater with the all-over knit and pearl texture. So this is a says worsted weight on Ravelry, but I'm pretty sure it's a DK weight knit because it is knit with two fingering weight yarns held together on four millimeter needles. So if that doesn't sound like DK to you, then 
I don't know, it sounds like DK to me, but this is a top-down crew neck slipover. It has a repeating pattern of zigzags, not as oversized as the previous two slipovers that I just mentioned. Recommended ease is two to four inches. That's about six to 10 centimeters. And this one comes in sizes extra small through 4XL. And now we'll get into my favorite category of patterns and these are pullovers. Pullovers are so nice. They're so fun to knit. They're so fun to wear. I cannot have enough pullovers. So I didn't really have any rhyme or reason with like why these pullovers I specifically picked for this fall. So with that, there's just three different pullover patterns that I would love to knit this fall. The first being the Birch Pullover by Andrea Mowry. Now this one really took me by surprise because this is an all over half fisherman's rib fingering weight sweater. Now, if you follow me, you know that I knit that Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta, which is an all-over, half-fisherman's rib, Aran weight cardigan, and I did not enjoy it. I thought it took too long. I didn't like how slow it was growing because of the half-fisherman's rib. So the fact that now I want to knit a fingering weight half-fisherman's rib sweater really surprises me, but it's just too stunning to not want to knit. It just looks so nice. It looks so easy to wear, I think, in a slightly variegated neutral color. It would look gorgeous. So it's on my knit list. <laughs> if I actually knit it one day, you'll see, but <laughs> I would love to be able to knit it. The recommended ease on this does range from zero to six inches of positive ease, so you can really choose if you want it to be more baggy and oversized or more form-fitting you have that option it comes with a finished bust circumference from 35 and a half inches to 66 and a quarter inches and it's just very classy it looks like a lot of sweaters that stores will sell commercially so i think that's why i'm drawn to it because i would love to have something that just looks very commercial but know that i knit it myself the next pullover that is really inspiring me this fall is the Judy Sweater by Gregoria Fibers. This is a very oversized drop shoulder sweater with this all over knitting stitch texture that kind of reminds me of basket weave, although it's not a basket weave stitch, it's just sort of garter blocks that are separated by some eyelets. I just think it looks really good in combination with the style of the sweater and the twisted rib details. And this is a DK weight pattern, so you can use any DK weight wool. It has a recommendation of eight to nine inches of positive ease. That's about 21 to 24 centimeters. Is graded to fit sizes 30 inches through 61 inch busts. And the last sweater pattern that I have on this list is the Lento by Jonna Hayatala. The Lento took a lot of knitters by storm last year. There was a Lento knit along that I did not participate in, but really enjoyed watching everybody else participate. So here I am almost a full year later wanting to knit the Lento. People really loved the pattern because you use a fingering weight and Surrey alpaca held together, but you knit the sweater on six millimeter needles, which gives a very open fabric that is not see-through because of the Surrey fibers and it knits really quickly. It's a top-down raglan construction and everyone just had a really good time knitting it and I can see myself having a really good time knitting it and adding that to my wardrobe. The recommended ease of this pattern is five inches, that's about 12 and a half centimeters, and comes in finished bust circumferences ranging from 38 and a half inches to 67 and a quarter inches. That is equivalent to 96 to 168 centimeters. Those are all of the patterns that I would love to knit this fall. I, for obvious reasons, cannot knit all of those. So now I'll go through my more refined list of what projects I'm actually going to be knitting this fall. And I'll be sharing with you guys all the yarn I have for them, which is my favorite part. So I hope that you guys are excited too. So first off, I have two carryover projects that I will be continuing to knit in the fall and hopefully will be finishing in the fall. They're both cardigans. The first that I have in progress is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. I've been working on this for a little while now. I don't actually know for how long, but 
I am moving quite along so I'm almost done with the stockinette body and then I'll go through the ribbing and I have to do the sleeves and then my plan for this is to modify the pattern and do an applied double knit button band instead of the one by one rib button band that's in the pattern. This is being knit in Estelle Yarns Alpaca DK, which is a alpaca and Highland wool blend. I think it's a 60-40%. I don't remember which is which, but <laughs> it's a blend of alpaca and wool, and this is the color charcoal, which is a really nice gray, and the alpaca fibers definitely give it a lot of heathering, and there are a lot of fibers that are sort of coming off of this. It has a lot of texture, but it's very soft, and I think it's going to be a really nice layering piece to have this fall in this neutral gray color. I can totally see myself just throwing this on whenever I need an extra layer of warmth. And the next carryover project is actually, I don't have any progress on it because it's my frogged Whitmore cardigan that I had knit. It was too big, I frogged it all, and I am planning on casting it on very soon so I can get that back on the needles and hopefully knit and finish this fall. It's this beautiful circular yoke cardigan with lace details, and I am going to be knitting it in the color Townhouse, which is by Sorella. This is an off-white, really nice beige color and I wanted to have a pretty snug fit zero ease on me is the intent with re-knitting it so it doesn't have a lot of positive ease so this will be both an outfit maker and I think also a good layering piece because it is in this neutral color I think I could pair it pretty well with other tops Oh, I don't think I mentioned, this is classic DK. So this is a DK weight, I'll just be holding it single. I think the Whitmore cardigan pattern suggests a fingering weight wool and mohair to make that DK weight gauge. And this is just 100% superwash merino wool. The next project I'm planning on knitting this fall is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. I've been wanting to knit this for a while. I actually have already made one for my husband Nick. I did the zipper sweater man for him and I'm planning on doing just the original zipper sweater pattern for me. I have the yarn already. I actually bought this last year. Was it last year? Yeah. I bought this last year with the intent to make the zipper sweater. So this is Filcolana Peruvian which is a worsted weight Peruvian Highland wool. It's 100% non-superwash. This is the color charcoal. This is beautiful heathered black, and I'm going to be pairing it with Filcolana Tilia. This is Filcolana Silk Mohair. It is 70% kid mohair and 30% silk. This is in the color black. So together, I have made this swatch, so I'll show you guys the swatch as well. And here it is. It is so soft and I haven't knit with worsted or Aran weight in a while and it's just so squishy and I'm just so excited to cast this on. I actually might cast it on like later today after I finish filming and editing, but I really like how the heathering in combination with the solid black mohair just gives this variegated textured look. And I got the zipper as well. Did I need to order the zipper from Petite Knit and have it shipped all the way from Denmark to me? No. Did I want to? Yes. <laughs> so I really wanted Petite Knit's metal zipper. I just love how it looks. It looks really high quality and yeah, so I splurged on it. I'm sure there are places that you can get nice zippers here in the US, but I will say it was hard to find. When I knit Nick's zipper sweater, I tried to look for a metal zipper in person at a bunch of different craft and yarn stores and couldn't really find any. I only found plastic. So once I went online, there were a few more metal options, but at that point, I'd probably be paying the same price for those ones online as I was for the petite knit metal zipper. So that's my logic with that. I don't know if it's logic, but I don't need to justify buying it from petite knit. I just acknowledge that it's not necessary, but I did it anyway. This is it, the zipper. It's really nice. It's in the color black, which for obvious reasons, I got the color black and that's the bottom. So, and I guess a pro <laughs> to ordering from Petite Knit is that they included some labels in there. That was not part of my order. So I got two little Petite Knit labels that I will happily sew into some of my finished Petite Knit pieces. So that is the zipper sweater project. I have everything ready to go for it. So I'm really excited to start it.
I also really want to knit the Ingrid Slipover by Petite Knit. I have been craving texture in my knitting projects and I have this yarn here. So I don't know how to pronounce this brand. It's from Denmark. This is, I have been pronouncing it like this. I'm not saying it's correct. It's actually probably wrong, but Heidholz Uldspundery. And this is their Handwerkskarn, which is a worsted weight Danish wool. This is the color sand. It is a pretty lofty two-ply wool. It's mostly white or sort of a cream color with some very like light gray or light black heathering all throughout. And I had originally bought this to make the weekend slipover v-neck that I had mentioned but I changed my mind. I wanted to do something more textured and I think that this will be a good pattern choice for the yarn. I'm hoping that I get some good stitch definition out of this even though it is just two ply because it's a light color. I'm hoping it'll work. I'll obviously swatch and then make an executive decision from there but that is my plan with this yarn and that pattern. The next pattern I'm planning on making is the Judy sweater by Gregoria Fibers. Speaking of texture, I just could not get over the texture in this pattern. I think it's really lovely and this is the yarn I'm planning to use for it. This is Patagonia Organic Merino by Juniper Moon Farm. This is a sport to DK weight yarn. I've seen it listed as both weights, but I have swatched it and it seems to fit DK weight pretty well. This is in the color violet and isn't that just gorgeous. It's just this beautiful deep purple, one of my favorite colors. You might notice that this is the same color as my Ninets logo, so lots of color inspiration just from my personal favorite color there. And I did swatch it as well, so I'll show you guys the swatch. This is in the texture of the pattern, and I'm hoping you can see it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So there's the swatch. I think it looks really nice. This is just that yarn held single on four millimeter needles. You have those nice garter ridges with the eyelets and I think it's going to be a really nice looking sweater, really oversized. This is a really fun wool to knit with. It is a two ply. It is kind of a sticky wool so it does stick to itself but it feels really nice. It feels even nicer after washing and blocking it so I'm really excited to cast that on as well. I also am excited to knit the Lento sweater and this is the yarn pairing that I have selected for it going back to that neutral cream color that I seem to be really liking this season. So this first color that I would use as the base is by Woolberry Fiber Co. This is Rabbit Rump from their Caboose collection. It's a cream base. This is on their Berry Cozy Sock base which is 80% merino, 20% nylon. And it's a cream base, like I just said, and it has these black and gray speckles going all throughout. The gray is sort of like more of a color where the black is more of a speckle. And I'm going to pair it with some undyed Surrey alpaca that I got from Birch and Lily Fiber Co. This is a lace weight, 74% baby Surrey alpaca, 26% silk blend and pair it together. I think that these will look really nice in a lento. Really excited to knit this up and see how all of the speckles from this yarn play out because you can see in the skein, you know, there's not a lot, but I, I like that. I like how this is gonna be a mostly cream colored sweater with just a hint of gray and black speckling in there. So can't wait to swatch this up. I haven't yet, but once I do, I will show you guys how it turns out. So those are all the garments that I plan on knitting this fall. I do have a few accessories that I would like to knit as well. Obviously we'll see what happens with timing and if I'll actually get to them. I feel like every once in a while I'll introduce an accessory knit to my knitting rotation if I'm getting bored with the garments or the I just want like a quick satisfactory knit. And this first one here probably isn't that quick because it's a fingering weight shawl and that is the Boho Blush Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And it's a circular shaped shawl, mostly garter stitch. There is some sort of like 
fan and feather lace work. I think there's some brioche work as well. She has it with all this fringe on the end. I don't think I would do the fringe, but that is yet to be decided until after I actually knit it and see how it looks. And I don't have the yarn yet that I'm planning on knitting that in, but it's on the way. And that is a pre-order of Sorella Yarns Red from her Taylor Swift collection. I ordered it in their fingering weight sock yarn. And the idea of using the red yarn for the shawl came from the Taylor Swift red scarf idea. I would love to have a red scarf knit in the color red from a Taylor Swift collection. It just all sounds too perfect. So that yarn is on the way and I'm looking forward to casting that on. I think that might be later in the fall and I think it'd be really nice to have that finished before Christmas time because it is kind of a Christmassy red color. So if I could have that ready for the holiday season to wear with my outfits then as well, I would really enjoy that. I'm sure I'll also be knitting some beanies this fall as well. I have a few single skeins in my stash that would be well suited for beanies. I really want to try the weekend hat pattern by Petite Knit. It's a one by one rib hat with a triple folded brim and I feel like ribbed hats just fit really well because of the ribbing and the stretchability of them. So I have this, I have two skeins of this yarn from Night Bright Yarn Co. This is the color Starfish in their Bright DK base which is 100% superwash merino and it's just this beautiful tonal variegated kind of both pink I love how it has light and dark and even a little bit of like orange. So I think this would look really cute in a beanie for me. <laughs> so I'll probably knit this at some time in the fall and maybe some others. I have some other single skeins that I didn't grab so you'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> and of course I'll be continuing to knit some socks but I don't know, I feel like lately I've kind of been losing my sock mojo. I just haven't had motivation to knit socks. So whatever socks I'm inspired to knit in the fall, I will let you know at a later time during my podcasts. I don't have any specific patterns that are calling my name right now, except for maybe the Cider House sock pattern by Summerly Knits that I might use with my Woolberry Fiberco sock set in Hummingbird Heine. I think that would be a fun one. I think the cables would be perfect for fall, again, with that sort of academic vibe. And I think that's all I have to share with you guys. I feel out of breath. That was a lot to go over. <laughs> I hope that you felt inspired with what's inspiring me this fall. I'm always excited to share colors and patterns with you guys. So I'm looking forward to casting on my fall knits. I didn't even mention what I'm wearing, so I'll talk about it now because this was actually my last summer knit. So this is the Lanakai Summer Tea by Sally Yi. I knit this in Sorella Yarns Bamboo Sock Base in the color Pinot Noir. Both of those are from her Spring Tonals collection, the color Pinot Noir, and the base is an 80% bam... <laughs> it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% bamboo. It's this really fun oversized t-shirt that has a lot of drape and positive ease. I really like these simple details on the yoke and the little raglan shaping at the sleeve turned out really good and yeah that's what I've been wearing sorry I'm mentioning it last but maybe that's a good way to wrap up the video with you know that was my last summer knit and I have all of these yarns just staring at me waiting to be casted on so I think I'm gonna go make a hot drink it's the evening, so I can't make coffee. Maybe I'll make a decaf coffee or a hot chocolate and cast on something for the fall. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like my content and want to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Comment below what you guys are knitting this fall. I'd love to hear from you and seeing what everyone is up to. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.